Hi folks, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to start the process of looking at Laplace transform properties. And the first properties that we'll look at are differentiation and integration, arguably the most important ones for control system design. First, a little motivation. Laplace transform properties are pretty useful for a lot of reasons. One of them is so that you can expand the ability of whatever Laplace transform table you have. We'll see many examples of that in subsequent videos. Additionally, some of these properties are used all the time in control system design. In particular, one that we'll see later in the series called the final value theorem. But for now, we're just going to look at differentiation and integration properties. By the end of this video, you should be able to take the Laplace transform of a differential equation without any problem, including incorporating the initial conditions. And one of the really important things is being able to relate differentiation and integration in the time domain with their counterparts in the Laplace domain. So here we go, differentiation. The Laplace transform of the time derivative of some function f of t is just s times the Laplace transform of f of t, s times f of s. Now you also have to take into consideration the initial conditions. So it's actually as shown in equation 1 where you subtract off f at time equals 0. Now this gets a little bit more exotic when you have higher order derivatives. So for instance, if you have the second derivative of f, or the third derivative of f, or, as shown in equation 2, the nth derivative of f. But it's not too bad. You just get s to the n, however many derivatives you have, times f of s, and then you have to subtract off this long list of all the initial conditions. Now before we dive into equation 2 more deeply, it's probably a good idea to look at this notation. The superscript on the f's that are in parentheses represents the number of time derivatives on f. So for instance in equation 2 the very last term has f with the superscript in parentheses of n minus 1. That just means that there's n minus 1 derivatives or dots on that f. So it's the n minus 1th initial condition on f. This property is probably easiest to see when you just work an example. And here we have the Laplace transform of the third derivative of f. So you just get an s cubed times capital F minus s squared times f0 minus f times f dot minus f double dot. The main takeaway is that differentiation in the time domain is like multiplication by s in the Laplace domain. And here's the integration property. The Laplace transform of the integral of f of t is equal to the Laplace transform of f, so capital F, divided by s. This too gets a little bit exotic when you have multiple integrals. So here we have n plus 1 integrals, and so the Laplace transform of that quantity is just 1 over s to the n plus 1 times f of s. And the big takeaway here is that integration becomes division by s in the Laplace domain. So here's our first example. What we're going to do is take the Laplace transform of this differential equation. It's a third order differential equation, and the input or the right hand side is a unit step, and we have three initial conditions, which makes sense because it's a third order differential equation. So the first thing we do is look at that x triple dot term and take its Laplace transform. So we have s cubed times capital X minus those three terms that make up the initial condition sequence. And then we do the same thing for the next term. So 3 times the quantity s times capital X minus an initial condition. And then we do one more for the 4 times x of t. That just becomes a capital X. And the unit step is 1 over s. Now you have to be a little bit frosty when you start putting in the initial conditions. So here is one way that you can do it. First, we can see that x at time equals 0 is just 0, so those two terms just go bye-bye. The x dot is 0 is negative 2, so I'm going to sneak in underneath this term that quantity, negative 2 times s, so negative 2s. And I'll do the same for the x double dot, that's just 2. 
And now I can start bringing these things together. And what I'm going to do is factor out all of the terms that are multiplied by capital X. And as I do that, I'll just put a little check mark underneath that term. So when I'm all done, or I think I'm all done, I can look at that equation and make sure I've checked everything off. So there's the first initial condition. You have to be a little careful with that because the negative 2s has the other negative sign in front of it. And when you put it to the other side, you get a total of a negative. There's that one. And finally, the unit step, or the 1 over s. Now we also have to solve for capital X. So on the right-hand side, we'll get a common denominator and then just divide through by that coefficient in front of the capital X. And there we go. Now that's an interesting little expression because the inverse Laplace transform of capital X is just equal to X of T, which is the solution to that original differential equation. We'll be doing this in a subsequent video, but this is how you solve a differential equation using Laplace transforms. Here's another example where we'll exercise both a derivative and an integral. Now if you take a step back and look at this, you'll recognize it as the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we know that the Laplace transform of this should just be capital Y of S. What this does is it allows us to exercise this notion of multiplication by s as a derivative and division by s is an integral. And when you do those two operations simultaneously or back to back, then you just get nothing. The, the differentiation cancels with the integration in a sense. But here we'll do it formally and Laplace both sides. So there's the left hand side and the right hand side goes like this. We just throw a, a cursive L in front of the expression and go to town with it. So the first thing we get from the, the, the DDT is a multiplication by S and then with the integral a 1 over S and voila. In this example we're playing a little game. It's as if we have a Laplace transform table that's a tad deficient and all it has in it is the Laplace transform of sine omega t. But we have to find the Laplace transform of cosine omega t. We could do this the hard way and use the Laplace transform definition, but now we'd have to do that integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative s t cosine omega t. Ugh. Or we could use the differentiation property because we know that the derivative of sine, the thing that we have, is just equal to omega cosine omega t. Or you could write this as solving for cosine omega t, and you get this. Because, of course, that's what we want to find the Laplace transform of, that is cosine omega t. So here we go. We just have 1 over omega, Laplace transform of ddt sine omega t. And so we just multiply by s the Laplace transform sine omega t. And there we go. And that's exactly what you would find in any good Laplace transform table. So that is it. Our first stage of looking at some Laplace transform properties. There's a few other videos after this one where we look at some other properties. But these are arguably the most important for control system design and analysis. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.